Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 130 of the Nope Coach podcast. I'm your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Today's topic, making yourself a priority. And I am joined by the amazing Elise, who has written an awesome blog on this topic. So before we dive in, as you're listening to this, pause, if it's safe to do so, close down your eyes and have a think, what comes to mind when you hear make yourself a priority? I imagine there's the nascent eye roll of, yeah, yeah, I know, but (laughs) I've heard this before, but, and I think Elisa's point of view might be something that you haven't heard before. So before you pause, skip to the next one, uh, give us a few minutes and let us dive deep. So I'll hand it over to you. Take us away. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Can you pause this? Nope. It's live <laughs> recording. I throw people in okay. the deep end. <laughs> no editing. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, self-care, self-care, very important. Um, women, uh, think that self-care is about bath bombs and facials, right? Yes. When, yeah. And it becomes very cheesified, like you said, right? Um, uh, if I have time, I'll do the things for myself or yeah, I've heard this all before, but the problem is that there's never any time left over for us. And if it is not a priority, if you don't make it a priority, uh, it will not happen pretty much guaranteed, right? And I think that every woman, I, I work primarily with women, has to figure out what it is that lights her up. What is it that gives you the energy back, you know, that kind of fills that cup. And those are the things you need to make an absolute non-negotiable priority. For me, it's exercise. I work out every day. And if I didn't, that would not look good. I mean, I need it for my brain. And so I've always scheduled it in my appointment book. Now I I do pen, paper, uh, I don't use electronic stuff. So I would write it and block the time out in my schedule because to me, that is as much an appointment as any client that I'm seeing or any doctor's appointment that I have. It And you have to do that for yourself because it just won't happen otherwise. I love that so much. And I love how you pointed to self-care, bath bombs, massage, like from my definition or my point of view, a lot of those things are aftercare because we don't prioritize self-care that we get to the point of burnout and these things are required. And it's like, what about we create a life that we don't need a holiday from? And as you said, blocking it out, scheduling it and sticking to it like you would a medical appointment. It's kind of funny at the time recording this, I was just telling Elise before we hit start. uh, Fortunately, my husband's taking care of it. My daughter does need a medical appointment today. And I was like, oh, this was not part of the plan. But it's amazing how much the plans can change when needed. And anyone listening, it's not it's not emergent, emergent. Obviously, if it was, I would be with her. But it was just like, this is kind of, um, you know, suboptimal. <laughs> but, you know, we, we need to carve that time out for ourselves and we need to protect it and champion it and not feel guilt or shame about it. And yours is exercise. And I love that. For me, what I need is time alone. I am a hardcore introvert with two very young children and I recharge on my own not with my kids not with my husband not with anything on my own and I got to guard that time like a dragon guarding its treasure and it doesn't just happen because I think for many of us we think oh I'll get to me after after Mm -hmm. the kids are sorted out but the kids are never sorted out as evidenced by today or after the house is clean the house is never clean like it's it gets dirty again uh and it's funny how we we realize that we need to wash our physical body. We have to shower every day, but we don't begrudge that. But when it comes to working out like exercise or alone time or journaling or meditation, we often really begrudge that. It's like, well, I've done this before. It should just be like ticked off forevermore. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. But I think what what I love about what you said is that it, you say it without, you don't apologize. There's no guilt. There's no shame. It's this is what I need. And it's important as opposed to, Many women getting the message that to take time for myself is selfish and to be a woman, to be a mother, whatever, is to selflessly give and martyr myself. And 
I, you know, I, I'm sure you too have talked to so many women where they almost wear that martyrdom as like a badge of honor. Like, oh, you know, I just do and do and do for everyone. Else. That, that's, that's not cool. Like that should not be the goal. We should be modeling for our children also that we, that we take care of ourselves and what we need is important. I think it's a really good lesson. And just like you said, with the medical appointment, I, I use, I refer in a program I have to uh, physical therapy. So let's say, you know, you're very, very busy and then you get injured and then inevitably it's, you need to go to physical therapy three times a week. You're like, how the hell am I going to find three days a week? You do. Or if your kid needed all of a sudden to be somewhere, you would figure it out. So it's not that you you necessarily can't find the time. It's that you are not in your own mind making it enough of a priority to carve out that time specifically for what you need. And you need to ask, why is that? And what am I waiting for? Yes. And I think that's, it's such a, it's, it's very much a cultural, a society, an upbringing thing. Like in, you know, the more Western approach and Western medicine, we wait until something breaks down. Like, you know, I'm injured or I'm sick or I'm requiring physical therapy or psychotherapy or whatever. And then we find the space, as you said, we create the the space for it. But I remember the first time my sister and I went to a, a Chinese medicine doctor, like a herbalist, and they were like, there's nothing wrong with you. And here are all the things you re- we recommend. And my sister was horrified. She's like, what a money grubber. Like, how are they? And I'm like, it was interesting though to look at the different approach because it's like everything's going well. So let's prioritize maintaining that as opposed to let's burn this thing into the ground and when it's burnt out. And it's funny. So I injured my back quite a number of years ago now. And um, to cut a long story short, I eventually ended up seeing a chiropractor. And I I went to medical school. So I'm tr- mostly trained Western medicine, did five of the six years who are very against chiropractors, but when you're in enough pain and nothing else has worked, (laughs) you try most things. And I remember seeing them and it was funny within a couple of adjustments, I was like, Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I've only got my normal pain now. And she's like, wait, what your normal pain? Like this wasn't my flare up. She's like, we need to investigate this. And why are you comfortable with being in pain all the time? Yeah, that that was firstly there was that. And then after we'd gone through it, she explained to me there's two pathways forward. Well, I suppose there's technically three. One, go off on your merry way into the sunset. Goodbye. Two, um, if you you're good now, if you have problems, come back. She goes, I don't recommend that one. Like you have a relapse or you know. And the third one was we do maintenance adjustments and we find a schedule. So it started once every three weeks, then once every four weeks. Now it's once every five weeks. And it's been over a decade. So I still go to the chiropractor once every five weeks for a decade. My dad That's is amazing. horrified by this. He's like, why would you do that? And he also it's had back thing and went to a ch- chiropractor. Like, um, But he has a breakdown, you know, once every two or three months and then needs to go twice a week. Whereas I just do this maintenance thing every five weeks. And I just think it's just, it's a whole shift in mindset. Like I prioritize my body enough that I get it adjusted every five weeks, sometimes six, if there's a holiday or something, or sometimes four, if something's niggling, but it's, it, it, it's into this making yourself a priority. I prioritize my back enough that I make the time I set aside the funding and, you know, and that really works for me. So I don't end up in this, on off and it kind of always reminds me of dieting like you go on a diet you lose a bunch of weight you go off the diet you gain it back (laughs) exactly as you're talking about that i'm thinking people who like i know somebody who does that cuts out carbs and loses 30 pounds like but unless you're never going to eat carbs again what's the point because you're just going to gain it wouldn't you rather be slow and steady and be able to maintain that as opposed to like i need to lose it really fast why so yeah. you can go back to eating the way you ate to gain the weight in the first place. Yeah. So it's like, it's a whole shift, like the whole, and I love, and I'm, past me is going to roll my own eyes at this, the lifestyle change that comes with making yourself a priority, but also the discomfort in the moment of sometimes like, I know, you know, things we've had to skip before my kids like, Oh, I want to go and watch this movie. That's, that's my Cairo day. No, we're not going. Or you can do it tomorrow. Like some people have to be inconvenienced for me to make myself a priority. And to hold that line without guilt is challenging, especially in the get, beginning. Yeah, you got to get to the place where you can say it and own it and not feel. And even if you feel guilty, I would argue women should do it anyway. And because a lot of times the emotion, emotion 
takes a, it's a lag from your emotion to catch up with the behavior. And in my therapy practice, I'm very behavioral where we need to start implementing behavioral changes because you can have all the insight in the world as to why you're so guilty or where that comes. That's all valid. But unless you're going to do something different, you're going to stay exactly where you are. So I say, do it guilty, feel guilty about it and do it. And as you have repeated experiences with that and you say like, oh my gosh, I'm better. I'm a better mom. I'm not as cranky. I'm not yelling as much. It's important. That is what is going to help motivate you and keep you invested in maintaining that schedule and making time for yourself. I love that. And what you said just then reminds me of like the difference between a breakthrough and a transformation. A breakthrough can happen in an instant. You can go to a therapy session, you can listen to a podcast, you can read a book, you can have an aha and go, oh, this is why I do what I do. Oh my goodness. And then nothing changes because the transformation is what comes from actioning that. And I think, you know, I have been guilty of this, like becoming a breakthrough chaser or hunter and reading and listening to all the things and kind of getting that high from all these insights. But then, you know, my life's still shit. (laughs) No magic pill anywhere, unfortunately. Exactly. So for anyone listening, I'd encourage you to, you know, have a think about where in your life have you not been making yourself a priority and not giving yourself a laundry list and becoming exhausted, but like, what's one thing? So Elise is like, she likes to prioritize exercise. Me, I, I prioritize alone time. Um, for a period of time, I will admit this because I'm no longer embarrassed. I prioritize naps. I have very young kids. And so when they're, they can be high needs in night. So when I got them to school or daycare or whatever, I come home. I'd have a nap because as you said, and feel like I'm lazy. I'm not productive. I mean, all of that, that shame would, would be piled on and we do it to ourselves, you know, and all that programming, lazy and productive. If I have a nap, I can get up and clean in so much faster a time than if I push through and kind of not really doing anything while I'm kind of watching YouTube or scrolling. So, you know, Where's in that? You're still awake. You're still awake. So, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of like eating. I wonder how many people overeat because eating technically is something that we have to do. If I want to watch TV, I feel real guilty, but girls got to eat. So So this has been fabulous. Um, At least let the listeners know what do you do and where can they find you? I do a lot. I am a therapist in private practice in New York, and I also have a few small group coaching programs. One uh, is for overthinking people-pleasing women called Are You Mad at Me? Women who lay awake at night and worry that they piss somebody off and that, you know, they they can't go on. And another one uh, called Stop Dating Assholes for Women Who Are Tired of the Same Old Dating Shit and Ready to Do It More Strategically and Intentionally. I love that. And where can people find you? Oh, uh, any of my various websites and social media. My website, uh, coaching with Elise, A L Y S E dot com. Uh, my therapy website, A F C, Apple Frank Cat Therapy uh, dot com. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram, both of those, coaching with Elise, A F C Therapy. And I am on TikTok making videos. Thank you very much. Oh, that's exciting. I'll have to go and check oh, yeah. it out. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Goes. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.